Hi, my name is Erno, and you can find me at ErnoAndy.com. Today I'm going to share a short book review with you. And I just recently bought a stack of books from Amazon, and just one book just jumped at me. And this book is, by the way, Built to Sell. It is by John Werrilow, double R, double L, Werrilow. You can also find him on Twitter, at John Werrilow. And Built to Sell jumped at me because it was written in a story kind of way. So it's a storytelling. And it's a story that, you know, really, um, I can see myself there, right? So it's a great story. And the story is about Alex. Alex is the owner of a business, a business that is doing okay. I mean, he's doing in revenues, he's doing pretty okay. And he's been building this business for 10 years. And uh, the, the thing is that, you know, recently stuff is not going in, in the perfect way that he really wants it to. He has a huge client which has a, you know, he, which makes a huge part of his revenue. And, you know, they more or less dictate what he needs to do. And it's, this was not the way that he intended to set up his business in the beginning. So, uh, when again they make some changes, you know, he's done with the business. He wants to sell. And to you know, to get some advice, to you know, to talk about the selling his business, he's gonna see his friend, his friend, his friend he didn't see for a long time, but you know, he knows that he was doing selling and buying some businesses and he's doing really well. So he thought, okay, this is a good idea, let's see Ted and talk about you know selling my business. Of course, Ted has a great way of looking at it, he has experience in this, and he gives Ted tips. And this starts off that they have a weekly meeting on Tuesday about the business. Alex explains, Ted listens and gives him some advice what to do next. And during this period in, in the next 16 or 18 months, of course the business completely changes and it's becoming sellable. And during the book also he's written, uh, not he, Alex, but John, he's written some tips down, tips that you can use in your own business and uh, not even if you just, you know, even if you don't think about selling the business right now, but it's you know it gives you great ideas about how you can set up your business and so in a way that is becoming less dependent on you as an expert and I think that's a great idea so let's share some of the tips but I think which I think are very good tip number one specialize it's an important tip which I use all the time if you're not specialized people will come to you and dictate what you want to do what you need to do if you're specialized, you attract the right clients that are interested in the products that you're offering, or you can say no, client, no to clients because you're offering so and so on, and you don't, you cannot help them. Tip number two: have no clients that make more than 15% of your revenue, because they dictate you. They know how much a portion of the business that you know are part of your revenue, and they dictate you, and they have the power. You don't want that. You want the power as a owner, of course. That's the way you. That's the way you want to start your business. Tip number three: pitch a process that you own puts you in control. So if you understand your product, if you understand the process that you have, that you completely control, you are in control. If you pitch something that you know that you know about, that you're not specialized in, but you know about, the client is in control and they can dictate what you need to do for them. Tip number four, make the company less dependent on you, right? Which is, in the beginning, if you work alone, it's, it's very hard to imagine, but if you get more people in business, you can understand it's important. Tip number five, standardize service. Standardize your service into products, maybe just one product, which is what Alex did. They just had one product. If you have a product, you don't talk about clients, you talk about customers, which is a significant it's, it, it's detail, but it's important because we are used to be customers who buy products and we sell and we sorry we, we pay up front. If we are clients, we think in services and we also think about paying after the job is done. So imagine you go into, into, into a grocery store, so you buy an apple and you say, okay, I will pay for it when I'm done with it. It's not going to happen. It's a product you have to pay up front. Imagine that 
you get a people who's gonna clean your window in for your home and they will ask you to pay front and you say no I will pay you when you're done because then I can see the result of the work that you do okay so make products tip number six say no to clients or projects that don't fall into your process in your standardized process and this is a very difficult tip because you are you are familiar with the clients you know them they know you you've been working with them for a long time so it's very difficult to say no but it is important if you want to change if you want to make a business less dependent on you if you want to sell it if you want to have products and not services this is an important step you have to say no to your clients that you've been working on before and don't want to buy or purchase your products tip number nine listen I've skipped two tips and I'm skipping I'm skipping some more in the unions but tip number nine two salespeople hire two salespeople not just one so if you're ready to hire salespeople and you know they, they do the sales work that you normally do hire two because they will be in competition with each other and you will sell more as a business owner tip number 10 hire people that are used to sell products so hire people that have been working with products before don't hire people who are familiar with the business because you've been selling service before and you want to sell products now so you have to get people who are used to selling products then there is you know that's the story there's more tips in the story but then in the end of the book there's a small part which is a, a small portion of the book which is not a story but is just a process and it is the model for selling your business it's a eight steps and it's actually of course it's just the steps been described before in the story but the book it's eight steps that you should follow if you want to sell your business in the end if you want to learn about how you want to sell your business it's not about numbers it's about the story it's about you know making the right steps from then on and even if you think about not just selling your business but you want to think about making your business less dependent on you so you have more free time you can free it up for another project or um, you want to do some other stuff this is a great book to read hi thank you my name is Arnold and you can find me on ernohanek.com